Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, thanks for having me here. I think today's event is a very important. The world should know the truth. Home. Home is comfort, a place where you are well and safe. Home is world view and place where your wishes come true. Home is future, a place where your children grow. Home is universe, the place where the journey begins. It's our home, it's my country, in Ukraine, where is the war. Hordes of butchers, rapists, and murderers in Russian uniforms brought it. They look like humans being, but they do on all our lands, deprives them of the right to be called a human. Where home is really the resistance of evil. This should be said directly and clearly, because what's the day the truth is told? From now on war uh, crimes in Russia's second name and amending the name of once the Russian house in Davos, it's not just symbolic. It's honest, it's fair, for it's exposing both Russians' worldview and Russians' universe. Anybody can see its truth by themselves. Anyone can learn and the names of those whom the so-called Russian liberators liberated from everything, from peace, from freedom, from life itself. Very often for a fun and pleasure. Still, I'm going to tell you a couple of the life story, real stories of our people. This is the stories of Ukrainian children, victims of the war, victims of genocide against the Ukrainian people. On April 9, Russian troops shelled Vugledar, its city in Ukraine. Ten years, old Veronica's hometown. They had shelled it on the 8th and on the 7th and the day before. All the time, the girl and her uh, family, their hidings in the basement. The tank's shell flew right into the ventilation window. In the moment, Veronica lost her father, her grandmother, her uncle, and his wife. The girl has been in a coma for the several days. Doctor says she got several spinal cord and brain injuries. Veronica can walk already. She is working hard to exercise your paralyzed right arm. And here the story of the 10 years old Ilya. His native city, and name of the city now famous in all the world, Mariupol, became a war zone from the very beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion. He and his mother Natalia stayed in the city. And the first they had been hiding in their house basement. And they, they, they lived there. One day they came under enemy fire. They ran to their neighbors for shelter. But like betrayed them, the woman was wounded in the head and the boy's foot was crushed. Somehow Natalia brought her son uh, to safety. Wounded and exalted, they lay on the couch. Natalia was hugging Ilya while her heart is beating. She was gone that night. The next day, the Russian military forcibly took the boy to occupy Novozovsk. Then he was brought to Donetsk. Local doctors fraud of amputating Ilya's foot. But he was lucky this time. Meanwhile, Ilya's grandmother in Ukraine was looking for a way to get her grandson back. She quickly obtained custody and she crossed 
the borders of four countries to take him home. But first, the boy had to get long-term inpatient treatment. One day, Ukrainian doctors said Ilya Lex was fully functional and he would be able to walk. He considered the day his second birthday. Ilusha can already move his toys. He is very determined to recover. He gets very joyful, then gets come to, he, uh, to him. But sadness remains in his eyes. It is impossible to imagine what this boy had to survive. His pain cannot be forgiven. This is, are just two stories. As of May 21, where were 660 more stories of wounded and killed children, what we knew, uh, know, knew for sure. But it's impossible to say the exact number of kids who lost their health and lives to the Russian invasion. The war is still going on in Ukraine. None of these stories are about collateral damage. Where are about genocide, Russian soldiers killed Ukrainians because we are Ukrainians. The Russian army is destroying Ukraine because it's Ukraine. This is the purpose and the goal of the invasion. Russian cars in uniforms seem to use the December 1948 UN Convention's definitions of genocide as a sources of their inspiration. Not a punishment warning, an additional to murders, torture and mutilation because of belonging to the certain group, reductions and privation of the childbirth and also of the least. You might have seen footage of the maternity hospital bombed in Mariupol. But it's not the only one. Dozens of them they destroy all over Ukraine. And there are thousands of damaged hospitals, schools, in kindergartens. Forcible transfer of the children to other groups in also the sign of genocide. Well, according to the Russian sources, as of May 21, the state sponsor of terrorism had deterred over 232,000 children to its territory. Other 2,000s of them it's, are either orphaned or separated from their parents. Meanwhile, the Russian parliament is preparing to simplify the Ukrainian children adoption by Russian nationals. It's not about humanism. It's not about a frenzy or hatred and destruction under the slogan of humanism. Genocide is one of the wildest crimes known to mankind. It employs pathological sadists, gullible fools and greatest thirsty duffers. But the worst thing is that silent people endorse it. The people who has lost their humanity because of the fear of their own tyrant. Davos is a place of strength. For the half of the century, a new world has been created here. If I were honored to create the Davos Forum slogan, I think I would suggest respect, synergy, concord. But today we knew that new world is being born in my country, in Ukraine. We are defending from the brutal and ruthless force. We are resisting an empire that sees genocide and crimes against humanity as routine, not taboo. But we are fighting not just for ourselves. The fate of Europe and the world is at stake. Evil has to be stopped. For the future's sake, it's always come back if it's not unpunished. Thank you very much.